there was a time when in Germany, in Europe, there was a wall between Eastern and Western Germany. And this book is from uh, Eastern Germany. The good thing from all the books from those days, from Eastern Germany, was that everything was explained very properly and in a simple way. This is the author, issued by the German military from the DDR, Eastern Europe. Here is the index. And let's jump through this book. It is from 1933. And a lot of pictures, and that's especially interesting. Here, for instance, the so called Noval tube. Noval means new. It's a kind of glass hood uh, that was melted on this completely um, modern setup from um, cathode, anode, grid, etc. I think it was micro crow miniature welded. Here again a miniature tube from those days. Of course miniature was not so miniature and real miniature tubes came later. You see for instance such a tube from Eastern Europe typical miniature tube and here called a sub miniature tube. And here you see the same tubes but then made in America in those days. I think in the 1950s. And I've used this tube for instance in this radio. That's in my book Retro Radio. Uh, for medium wave frequencies. Let's pan over the circuit, perhaps interesting for everyone that wants to make such a tube radio. Um, so let's go on. Uh, how the electrode system inside the tube was made. Typical uh, characteristics from tubes, triode, tetrode, pentode, tri means three electrodes, tetrode means four electrodes, etc. etc. And you see for instance how the filaments could be connected. This is a connection in parallel. So every filament has for instance six volts or one volt and you, the voltage added is also 6 volt or 1 volt, but also you could connect them, the filaments and can connect filaments in series and in that case the voltage drop um, is related to the uh, ohms resistance from the fil filament. And that resistance changes when it's heated but anyway, that's the principle. So the voltage divides here according to the resistance from the filaments. A, a diode tube here, uh, an indication from the anode current. Electrons flow are sucked up by the positive uh, anode and the cathode delivers the electrons and every tube has a certain characteristic and that's indicated here. Here is an indication from the relation between the anode current and the voltage on the steering grid. And here an indication from the anode current um, in relation to the voltage that's applied to the anode 
and here you see how that the current flows. This is a very important characteristic and here you can also see um, a kind of overview from how a tube will act on um, a certain voltage at the anode. So there's a lot to tell about tube characteristics but of course that's not possible in this video from approximately five minutes. Many other interesting things are told. This is very interesting. When you work with tubes, you also have to do with capacitance. Capacitance between, for instance, the grid and the anode and the grid and the cathode. And here you see that all indicated. These capacitance play capacitances play a very important role when you work with tubes on VHF, very high frequencies. It, it acts as a kind of parasitic capacitance that brings the frequency down when you have, for instance, here a coil connected. So modern tubes and special high frequency tubes are constructed in a very specific way to avoid a capacitance between the grid and the anode and the cathode. And when you study that more you will find uh, many, many information on the internet. This is the tetrode. It's also a typical characteristic. And here again pictures from how the tube was built. Very interesting to see, I think with uh, glimmer plates, with wire. The wire that you see here is a grid. The cylindrical wire there is a grid. And here the base from such a build-up. And in the 1950s and earlier many tubes were handcrafted in the factories. For instance Philips in Eindhoven in the Netherlands People really made these tubes by hand. Okay, hexode tube has eight electrodes, as far as I know. Heptode has five electrodes, typical properties. So let's look for more pictures. That's always good to, to look at. Perhaps this video is somewhat too long, but anyway, well, I want to sum through very quickly. Uh, here, crystals in a kind of tube enclosure gives more stability of course when this is all sealed so well and temperature have less influence on the crystal um, this is also interesting perhaps a voltage stabilizer tube it works very very simple like a Zener diode, the property, uh, the behavior is like a Zener diode. Um, at the input, we have a certain voltage. There's a gas, gas inside that tube that's ionized, and that means that the gas starts to conduct, and that also means that the resistance here inside uh, gets a constant value. And that means that the voltage catch gets a constant value. So, a stabilizing tube, stabilizing the voltage. So, that was all to tell.